My ex-husband just admitted he still loves me and I have no idea what to do about it. This is so surreal. I'm living a fantasy I've had a million and one times and I don't even know if I want it anymore. This is a long story that no one will read and I don't blame you, but typing it out might help me understand how I'm feeling here. We got married young, 19 and 22 with basically a shotgun wedding. Carried for 8 months just for it to end in a stillbirth. And he was there for me, and he cared, and it felt like we fell in love after we got married. And things were good. He wasn't controlling, he believed in me, motivated me to do more and more. Go to school, get a degree, become a nurse, all that. He even paid for a good, good, chunk of it himself, like most of it when he wasn't even making good money yet. The bedroom took some time to really figure out but once it was mastered it was mastered. He never tried to get me to have a kid again either. He was perfect. And he grew into being perfect which just made me love him more. What we had felt so loving and good and like wow, I really just stumbled my way into this from a casual FWB to an amazing life and husband. And it stayed that good for a long time. Then I hit 30. And things started to change. It was little things, little comments he'd make about how young we were when we met, how we went straight into making the marriage work and school and apprenticeships. How we never really got to be young. Even though I think 30 is pretty damn young. And he started to go out with his friends more, but not like before. Before they would come over and play video games or barbecue or something and chill out, but then he started going out out. And he just started having more fun without me I guess. And then it got worse. He sat me down and brought up the topic of an open marriage, more freedom for exploration and everything he couldn't do before me basically. And I said no, he said he wasn't sure he wanted to continue with what we had, and it all crumbled from there. He just decided he didn't want to be married anymore. To be clear, he divorced me. He didn't cheat on me, but it was motivated by the fact that he wanted to, his words. It was a bad divorce. But honestly, only emotionally. I felt blindsided and horrible and ugh, begged for him to stay, even said I would do the open marriage after all which he declined. He said it wouldn't be real if I didn't want it. And thank God he did that cause it's true. But he was a good person through the whole thing. He just was. He gave me our house that I paid a fraction for, because he wanted to make it up to me for him wasting my youth or something, youth became such a big talking point man ick. He offered alimony, which I should have taken him up on but I didn't because I felt bad. And I didn't actually need it. But the point is, he divorced me, blamed me for nothing and was kind. I couldn't even hate him. He wanted to stay friends, I didn't because I was still in love with him, so we landed on friendly. No blocking, follow each other on social media, no bad words to either side of the family, but we don't talk. Except the twice yearly, happy Thanksgiving slash Merry Christmas texts. The divorce was final in January of 2019. And I thought that was that. I didn't date throughout 2019 and 2020 I couldn't for obvious reasons. Same for 2021, just focusing on not freaking dying. But I did meet someone in 2022 and we've been dating for almost two years in February. It's nice. Easy. He's divorced too, neither of us want to get married again, and it just works. We were even talking about moving in together eventually. And then X calls. From his mom's phone no less. I had stayed close to her, not super but like a phone call twice a month and sending actually gifts for the holidays. So I picked up with the usual, hi Judy, how are you, and it was him. We hadn't talked in nearly five years and then bam there you go, ex-husband suddenly is desperate to see me. He said that we really needed to talk and asked if he could come by. He could even bring his mom if I was uncomfortable with just him. And I said yes, but to bring his mom. Now at this point, full on I thought one of them was dying. Mostly thought it was him and that he wanted to make amends or something. Because nothing else would explain the suddenness. He came over to the house with his mom as promised, but he looked fine. They both did, which made me so much more confused. But I let them in and waited for him to say something. 
It was the most awkward 45 seconds of my life. Until his mom elbowed him and said, I'm not doing this for another year. Tell her. I'll be in the other room. Which am I crazy or again does that make it sound like he's dying? And she left for the kitchen and left us in the hall. And he just started word vomiting, I don't know what else to call it. Like I'll type out what he said coherently, but I want to make it clear it did not come out this clean, being young and dumb didn't matter when I wasn't with him. He thought he'd be happy to have full freedom to do whatever he wanted, and he was for a while. He traveled, met people, dated, but it always felt wrong. And he knew he regretted the divorce years ago but didn't want to bother me after he broke everything apart, for fucking nothing apparently. He said his friends were in his ear, always talking about marriage and how it slowed them down and he listened despite the fact that I never tried to stop him from doing what he wanted. And he still loved me. And he wanted me back, and he never really stopped. And he would talk about it, year after year after year to his family. And his mom told him what I had told her, about the idea of moving in with the boyfriend, and it triggered the hell out of him. And that's how he ended up on my doorstep. I felt like I was in a damn movie. Except the music didn't swell and I didn't have like the magical moment of the love of my life and I are getting back together it all worked out. I just felt confused. And angry. And I told him that this was all too much to drop on me out of nowhere and to leave. But I'd call him. So now I'm here. Still confused. Still angry. But now I have to figure out how to tell my boyfriend about this. I will not be leaving him in the dark. But what the hell man? If you loved me so damn much why did you leave? Why were you so insistent that you had to be with other people? You know I'm seeing someone. You could have tried this for the years I was single. Why now? Why? I feel so suspicious and weird and I don't know if I believe him. But at the same time. I still have never loved someone the way I loved him. Is it that insane to think that what we had did matter to him? Is that delusional? Or did he just have a midlife crisis and regrets his? I don't fucking know. I just don't. Update. Well the height of the dramatics are over. I think it went as well as it could have, but I told my boyfriend everything that happened. He wasn't happy but he wasn't mad at me or anything. I think it helped that ex's mom had been there and we weren't just alone hanging out. But we talked, a lot. A lot, 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 spoiler we're not breaking up over this, and you know what? I love my boyfriend. And maybe it's not as intense as what I had with my ex-husband, but that took years to get to. It wasn't overnight either. I think it also helped that my boyfriend is divorced too, and when I asked what he would do in my shoes he had a lot to say. So we both agreed I'm going to see and talk to ex about it. He said that if it was him, he'd want to tell his ex face to face that it was over. So I texted the ex. And to be clear I wasn't vague about what was going to happen with him. The direct text, which my boyfriend saw, read, Hey his name, obviously, we need to talk about everything that happened the other day. But I want to be clear that we won't be getting back together no matter how the conversation goes. Knowing that, do you still want to see me? And he did. So we set up a time and place, public. And again, boyfriend is aware of all of this and is fine with it. But he did want to come with me. Not like inside where we were meeting, but drove me over and waited in the car. And I know that could sound weird or bad, but I feel like it makes sense. He's being so calm and collected about this whole thing, I think he just wants to stay in the loop. So not a red flag to me. Anyway, I went and we met up at a park, with BF having direct eyeline to the bench we were on. And we talked. It was a lot. Of course, it was a lot. I'd always have love for him, but the window to that life closed years ago. He cried, apologized for crying. And it hurt a lot to see and I felt so fucking bad. I don't want to sound awful or like I don't take my relationship seriously, but for a second there I just wanted to kiss him and tell him everything would be okay. But I didn't because that would be dumb as hell. And it's time to move on. But the talk was hard, and I'm a little worried he's hanging on to some hope because it ended on a weird note. He asked if things would be different if I was single, 
which, obviously, I feel like he thought that question made some kind of point that I'm not seeing. I told him the truth, that yeah, it would be. That my boyfriend was the top reason why I wasn't going to be exploring this. He asked what could happen if we ever broke up and I said that wasn't really a healthy road to go down. But I swear that made him perk up a little. I don't know, maybe he took it wrong. Maybe I'm reading into it wrong. But I don't think I have to worry about him pining away from me considering the circumstances of why we aren't together. I gave him a hug before leaving and that was that. It's still over. Obviously, I told my boyfriend everything, even the weirdness at the end which he didn't love. But he was fine with me keeping him unblocked. But did say he wanted to be told if he ever reached out again. Which is completely fine by me. Like the code to my phone is open he's welcome in any time. And I think that helped a lot. Like yik y'all he was so damn mature about the whole thing, it was really eye-opening to how much I appreciate what we have. He's very different from my ex. More reserved and quiet, but sweet. And he can still communicate. He just chooses his words and actions very carefully. And that's the kind of thing I need. Stability. I deserve that. I'm still a little worried about the ex though, considering everything I learned and how it ended. But I did my part. I'm not going to cut either of them off, yet. Because they really are good people. There is only so much I can write in a Reddit story but I don't hate him for a reason, even though he emotionally fucked me over bad. And especially his mom. She's a freaking angel. And I think after this she won't bring it up again. And if he starts popping up or something from her end then I'll do the hard work to cut her off. But that's it. It wasn't the big, fairy tale ending I dreamed of. But the nice, quiet life I made for myself is still intact. I heard my in-laws talking about getting my wife back together with her ex. I found out my wife was cheating on me with Alan. Nah, just kidding. Thanks for all the advices I received. Many of them were very helpful and some were very weird ideas like record conversations with my MIL or have my wife choose between her family or me, maybe it's something cultural but I would never give an ultimatum like that because to me it's a really low blow to do, here family is very important. After making the post and reading the comments I decided to talk with Abby about what I heard, we were in our room and I talked about what her mother and brother said as calmly as possible, but the moment I finished telling everything, Abby just kissed my forehead and ran with her pregnant belly out of the bedroom to literally yell at everyone in the living room. No one spoke beside an aunt who tried to justify them by saying that they were just making jokes to which I replied that they were uncomfortable and disgusting jokes. At some point Abby told her mother something like whether you like it or not, I'm married to this man. I'm going to have this baby with him and many more, so shut up and bear with it then my wife yelled at her brothers and went with them to talk in private. My BILs talked with me and admitted that they were only doing that because they believed I was forcing Abby to marry and live in a farm far away from the family when it was actually Abby's idea to get married in private and live in the farm so all this years it has just been a misunderstanding, the three brothers apologized to me and were really embarrassed about their behavior saying they only invited Alan to mess with me. After that most of the family members apologized to us, Abby told everyone that she doesn't want to see Alan in the house anymore while we're here, she's not going to forbid them to talk with him, but doesn't want to see him near her because it's uncomfortable. Umayel tried to complain but Abby just said shut up mom and left the living room with me. In the bedroom Abby confessed to me that she also felt uncomfortable but since Alan is a friend of the family she preferred not to say anything other than throw passive aggressive comments at him. For example, after New Year's we were all eating and Alan stroked her belly without asking, to which my wife said do it again and I'll bite you so he never did that again, Abby even said that in an opportunity she actually talked with Alan and told him that she dislikes being touched by other people but Alan said she was overacting and left her talking alone. I feel really stupid for not noticing how uncomfortable my wife also was feeling because after that is when she stayed most of the times. In the bedroom when Alan was in the house with the excuse she was tired because of the pregnancy. 
just out of curiosity I asked her why she broke up with Alan if he's such a cool man because I'll admit it, he's really charismatic and Abby told me that he always treated her like if he knew everything and explained things that she already knew every time they talked, Abby never felt the need of talking about that relationship because it wasn't relevant and she sees me as her first love and not Alan. I apologized to Abby for not noticing how uncomfortable she was and only looking at my own feelings without talking about it as a couple and Abby also apologized for the same, we promised to communicate this kind of thing to each other no matter what. Yesterday we went on a date together and when we came back my MIL looked very unfriendly but she apologized to my wife to which Abby said she should apologize to me so MIL and I talked for a while alone and although I'm still upset we promised to at least be civil with each other for Abby and the baby. We decided to the next time stay in one of my hotel rooms while we're here, even if it's a three hour drive it would be better for us to be comfortable and three months in my in-laws house was always really tiring so it's something we should have did earlier. For now Alan is not longer in the picture because yesterday I got his number to send a message clarifying why he can't come back and why I don't want him near my wife, the man just blocked me without answering, I guess he understood but if he didn't I don't have any problem in going to talk about it face to face. PD. I showed Abby the Reddit post and she didn't have any problem with me asking for an advice, I'm even posting this now with her hugging my arm. I love this woman a lot. PD2, Alan come back to the country because he divorced his wife and is filtering with any woman the way so it seems he thought it was a great idea to try and flirt with my pregnant wife. How do I, 25F, tell my needy friend, 28F, that she will ruin my holiday if she comes with? I was having lunch with two of my friends when Ash, F25, asked me what my travel plans were for 2024. I told her I was really excited about planning my first trip overseas with my BF, M25, and as soon as I said that ally, F28, perked up and said oh let me know when you're going so I can come too. We were both taken aback by the abruptness of her statement, she didn't even ask. I gently tried to tell her oh yeah that'd be nice. However, we would maybe like to do a couple things. Which she replied with, oh yuck, but that's fine, I just want to go shopping and get some sun. How do I gently tell her I do not want her on our trip? These are my main issues with it. Ally, I love her neurodivergent ass to death, but she can be, a lot. Has called me needing help with basic household chores before, making me reschedule my own plans because e.g. she cut her finger to the bone. She did not cut her finger to the bone, I lived 30 minutes away and had to cancel plans, when she managed to get herself together, about 20 minutes into my drive. Given herself food poisoning at least 5 times last year. Sprained her wrist so I had to drop her off at the emergency ward at the hospital. Sprained her ankle as soon as she touched the ocean, so I couldn't go swimming cause she'd be lonely on land. She was not initially invited to this. On multiple occasions inserted herself into conversations I am in that does not involve her, nor do the other person know who she is. And she won't leave. I usually end up excusing myself because I can see the person I'm talking to is getting uncomfortable. She assumes everyone that knows me knows her, I play a sport really well, so a lot of people know who I am and they'll often have random people talk to me. She will even later tell me that oh I tried to say hi to X and Y today but they looked at me like they had never seen me before. And I have to keep reminding her that they don't know her, but she insists she has spoken to them many times. This gets very exhausting. Invited herself to a birthday party as my plus one when she didn't even know the birthday girl, but she claimed she did. Made my BF and I spend our first Christmas together at her house so she wouldn't feel lonely, I was overseas last Christmas and she gave herself alcohol poisoning. Invited herself to our family's Christmas where she only knew me, my BF and her are more acquaintances, so I was left to entertain her to the point I couldn't enjoy my time. Me slash the situation. Traveling is expensive, I want to be selfish when I travel. The last time I traveled with someone who's not my childhood best friend was almost a decade ago. I will have a hard time compromising. It's our first trip together. This is also my forever partner so I would like this to be a memorable trip where we are each other's 100% focus. I am an introvert and my social batteries are as bad as an iPhone 7 and then I get cranky. And I don't want to subject my BF to that. My BF has never left the country before. It's exciting, but I am also 100% preparing to take on all of the mental load while we're traveling. 
In my awful, blunt brain I just want to tell her, hey I don't want you there you will ruin the trip. I don't want to eat a romantic dinner, 4-3. Or do a scooter ride, 4-3. You're way too accident prone for me to relax when you're there, even if you were on the other side of the island. I do not want to get a call from a random hospital saying you have done X, Y, Z to yourself. If you want to go, and we happen to be in the same area, you will have to be 1000% fine that I will ignore you. I am by no means stopping her from going overseas, I just don't want the mental load of another person, take into account her wishes, worry if she will FKN drown or dislocate her shoulder etc. But her rejection sensitivity is real. She's still a good friend of mine so I'm trying to be gentle with her. I feel like if she goes on this trip with us, I will end up despising her.